skin is the most hardcore canvas of all. There's just nothing like it. You know, it's the only canvas that bleeds, shits, talks back, art directs you, shows up late, it's cheap, tips you, compliments you, gets insecure, gets faded, moves. It's just nothing like it, man. Everyone's different, too. Every fucking one of them is different, man. And, uh, some people have milky, smooth, butter skin. They probably eat salads and tofu and shit every day. And some motherfuckers got leather skin that they eat fucking tacos and beer and pizza. And they got fucking psoriasis and shit. And each one of them want a tattoo. Here, I'm draw this perfect circle and a portrait on the inside of it of my grandmother who meant the world to me. Three hours. You know. Oh yeah, you can't erase nothing either. And I'll be bleeding the whole time. And every time you put the needle in, there'll be a puddle of ink so you can't see where you're at. I figured if I gotta deal with all that fucking shit, I don't wanna work on the street shop. So I had to make a, a decision on how I could be a standout. You know, how could I um, be original? I was building a foundation of a, of a whole style that wasn't even here yet. You know, of, of combining sign painting, prison, artwork, and New York graffiti art, and car culture, like Big Daddy Ross style, and mixing it all together. All these icons, man, they, they, they're, you know, they're incredible, you know, they're, I'm grateful for having them. The clowns, the roses, the teardrops, the spider webs, you know, they, they trace back from the 50s. You know, uh, homeboy started drawing and, you know, a lot of the old English came from uh, that everything important was uh, written in old English, you know, if, if it was the LA Times or a, you know, birth certificate or death certificate or um, any type of lawyer or any, any of that, the font was old English, you know, so the homeboys would look at it and they would write their neighborhood, you know, San Pedro like that, Rancho and do it in old English, it was like, damn, it was big, just like the, just like the fucking LA Times, you know, and uh, the President of the United States, you know, so that, that's, the old English became the official font of the hood in LA, in Southern California. The script writing went right along with it, you know, that was just that, that fluidity and that, that, uh, that old school look about it, man, you know, it was, it was, someone from the East Coast might say it looks feminine, you know, but, Fools out here just thought it looked gangster and it, and it flowed with everything, you know. The web was getting caught in the, in the web of society or the web of, of prison, you know, the web of drugs and shit and the dragons was, you know, chasing the dragon. And the clowns were, you know, to represent the good times and the bad times, and, you know, smiling no matter what went down. I just always loved clowns, man. It was always mysterious to me. And, Consider myself one and shit, you know, but not in a clown like that eh, fucking asshole's a clown. It wasn't that type of clown, but more of a, a fool that didn't care what people thought and was gonna do what they had to do. When I'm drawing a piece of paper and I don't like it, I crumble it up and throw it in the garbage can. If I'm on a computer and I make a mistake, Command Z will fix it. If it's a car trunk, I can wet sand it and take it off. But with skin, that's commitment right there. You gotta be focused, man. And it is the official style that there is no school, absolutely no school for. It was extremely difficult for me to get acceptance. None of the older guys would teach me if I was smoking weed or I was drinking. So they asked me to make a decision whether what I wanted to do. I made a decision, stop partying because they weren't going to try to teach me a, a lost art 
if I'm halfway there. You know, I got one foot in my career and the other foot on banana peel. So I made the um, decision to commit and uh, it's paid off, man. I didn't necessarily start out thinking of it being a brand name. Once Esteban started hooking me up with entertainers, because he was a tour manager for years, so he would introduce me to a lot of people, Outkast or Busta Rhymes or someone like that, and be like, you see their tattoos? He'd be like, hey, you got some nice tattoos. Like, Thank you, man. Like, you haven't hooked up a cartoon yet? So he would bounce off him like that. He'll hook you up with that dude, man, but you know, you gotta can't be late, can't show up late, home, and don't be cheap. And it would kind of build me up. I just thought it was cool tattooing the Goody Mob and these guys that I already listened to their music, so I just was a fan. And then to tattoo them was cool because we'd sit there like this, you know. After I tattooed Eminem, it all started to change. People started to take, Rolling Stone started to take notice and Entertainment Weekly and Details and GQ and Vogue and these magazines, I would never come out and you don't see tattoos come out in Korean L magazine. It just don't happen, you know what I mean? I had to put in 20 years of work that I wasn't doing interviews, I wasn't getting applause. Kids, they, they want to make it, right? but they think it's gonna happen overnight and it ain't gonna happen overnight. It's, it's the little successes that equal up to a big success. It's successfully taking out the garbage. It's successfully complimenting another artist when they got down. It's successfully keeping your trap shut when you're in the presence of older people that know what they're talking about. Because you can't learn nothing when you're talking. Same thing works with failure. You know, you see these artists that are the fucking bomb. These motherfuckers got more talent in their pinky than these guys that did all this art school stuff, man. They got more natural fucking talent and they're fucking broke as a joke, struggling fuck-ups. Well, everyone knows one, you know. For them, it just didn't happen overnight either. It was failing to say thank you. It was failing to take criticism. It was failing to show up on time. It was failing to meet a deadline. It was failing to, you know, accept a compliment. All those failures equaled up to us artists fucking up. Where I think most street artists are like fucked up with issues and have any kind of problem with having anything nice, man. We just want to get from A to B, enough money to pay our bills, and don't fuck with me. For most of my life, that's all I wanted. When I was broke, broke, 30 cents away from having a quarter, no one wanted to help me out. You know, no, no, none of them people. But when I was able to build myself up and show up in a decent car and hand them an invoice with a, a business card that was foiled and embossed, and uh, you know, it started to change. But it's a game, and it's difficult for artists to accept that shit. You know. A shallow world out there, man. I wish it wasn't like that. I wish I could just got judged off my personality and my my years of experience, but it don't go down like that. Having money to me means I can build an incredible studio and give my people jobs. Having money to me means I can take off of work and go speak to kids. But then on the other flip side of it, it ain't about money. Because no amount of money no amount of money will ever compare to a job well done.